Today we're going to talk about the easiest methods to change any color in your photo using Photoshop. So let's get started. What's happening guys, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com, home to editing tutorials, camera gear reviews, tricks and tips to make photography and photo editing a whole lot easier. So if that sounds like something that you'd be into, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with more videos just like today. So just as the title says, we are going to be talking about some great ways to change color using Photoshop. So in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the hue saturation adjustment layer and all of the amazing ways that you can use this tool to change your colors in Photoshop. I'm going to show you a bunch of different methods that will work for different images and different scenarios so you can pick whichever one works best for you. After we go through the hue saturation adjustment layer I'll dive into how to change white into any specific color since you can't really do that with the hue saturation adjustment tool. So with that let's hop into the computer and start learning how to change colors in Photoshop. Okay, so the first image that we're going to be using today is this image of this girl with a pink toque, blue background, couple very basic colors, so it's going to be a perfect example to showcase the hue saturation adjustment tool and how it works. So you can access the hue saturation adjustment tool by clicking right here on the hue saturation adjustment tool icon, or you can click down here on the half circle and go up here to hue saturation, whichever method works for you. Once you click on that, you'll have a new layer that pops up, the hue saturation adjustment layer, and you'll also have a new dialog box which has all of the settings for this tool. So immediately when you open this tool, you'll be greeted by the master tab, and that tab controls all of the colors in your photo. So for example, if I go to my hue slider here in my masters tab, look at what happens to my photo. All of the colors change in the image. Her skin, the background, the toque, her shirt, all of that stuff changes. So maybe that's what you want to do. Maybe you want to affect the colors of your whole image. Then the master tab is going to work great for you, but you're likely wanting to select something more specific than that. So for our first example, let's go and try to change the background of this photo. Let's say I want to change it to a different hue of blue or maybe a different color altogether. So obviously we can't do that in the master tab because that is the tab that affects our whole photo and the hue of all our colors in the image. So if I click here on the master tab, a drop down menu will come and there's a whole bunch of other color options here. So you can click on any of these, they all will look the same, but for this example I'm going to go down to blues because that's likely where the background is going to be sitting in. So I'll click on blues and I'm going to go ahead and just try to change the hue of my image. So now Notice how I changed my hue and not a lot is happening in my photo. Not even the background is really changing. So at this point you might be a little bit confused thinking, well I'm in the blues tab so why is it not changing colors? And that's because maybe you're not quite in the right color range. I'm going to show you what I mean here. So if you ever are in a situation like this where you think you're trying to change one color, in this case blue, and I go to change the hue, it's not really working out for me, nothing's happening. We can go down to this saturation slider and boost it to 100%. And now look what happens to our photo. You see how there's this weird banding that goes around this really saturated blue all around in certain spots of our photo. So that is showing us exactly what's being affected in that color tab. So in this case our blues tab is only affecting these very saturated areas. So that goes to show that we're not in the right color range. So I'll open back up my hue saturation adjustment, go to my blues, and I'll just reset the saturation back to zero by double clicking on the saturation word and it goes back to zero. So now let's try my cyans instead. So I'll go blues to cyans. Now let's bump up the saturation to see if we're in the right area. I'll click and drag up my saturation once again and notice how the entire background now becomes very saturated so that means we're in the perfect color range to affect our background. If we look over here on her sweater we see a little bit of blue is leaking over so that means that this area is also being affected by this color channel. In this case that's just a little bit of the color reflecting off of the background onto her sweater so that's going to be okay for us because if we change the hue of the background we also want the hue of that reflection to change as well. So I'm going to double click my saturation word to set it back to zero. Now I'll just go up to my hue slider and I can go ahead and change the color of my background. So I can slide it one way, I can slide it the other, notice how it changes color of course. Now I know what you're thinking, you're probably saying this color changing technique doesn't even work for me. Well don't worry, we still got three more to go so don't hit that dislike button quite yet. I have a lot more to show you. So now that we have figured out that we can change the color of our background just quickly by using the hue slider, 
This is the easiest and most straightforward basic explanation of how to change a color in Photoshop using the hue saturation adjustment layer. Now let's go into a little bit more specific ways of doing things. So now this time, let's say I want to affect the toque. So I'm gonna go up here to my reds channel and I'm gonna boost up that saturation, see what's being affected. And now you see that we have a bit of a problem. I wanna be affecting the toque, but I don't wanna affect the color of her skin or her sweater. So Watch what happens if I change the hue currently. Her skin changes color along with the toque. Of course, you could just go and mask all of that out, but that's a little bit annoying and kind of a lot of work. So what's a better way to go about this? On all of your color channels, there's going to be this slider down here, and this slider is selecting the color range that your hue sits in. So in this case, for our reds, notice how our slider sits within the reds of our total color palette, whatever you'd like to call this. In really basic terms, I'll just boost my saturation up so you can see this very clearly. If I click and drag the slider over, watch how the colors in my image begin to change. The areas that are saturated 100% or the areas that are being affected begin to change as I change the slider. So now as I go over into the greens, there's not many greens in my photo, so it's only really affecting this bottom area around here. If I go over the opposite way, I go over into the blues, and now all of a sudden I'm selecting the background the same as my cyans were. So this slider is a really key way to isolate specific color ranges within a color range. So for example, we are just in our reds, so let's set that back to red here. And I want to get rid of the skin tone. I just want to select this kind of red. I don't want to affect the red of her skin. So if I click on these little sliders on the outside, I can drag them out or I can drag them back in. And notice as I drag them towards the inside, away from the reds, it starts to get rid of the red of her skin. I can even drag this over completely to isolate it even better. So now only our toque is being selected, a bit of her lips, but that's no problem. We can just mask that out. It's a lot easier to mask out her lips than her whole face. So now that we have adjusted our color range, things are looking pretty good here. I can double click on my saturation, set it back to zero, and I'm gonna go to my hue slider and now we can change the color of our toque. So I can change this to pretty much whatever I want in this case, whatever floats your boat. You don't wanna go too crazy with it, of course, because things might look a little weird, but you can also just bring down the saturation and things will start to look better for you. So in this case, I wanna go for a nice brown kind of orange color. You can even darken it up if you'd like. And that looks really good to me. And so of course, I don't want to have her lips being affected. So I can just click on the hue saturation adjustment layer mask, grab my brush tool, make sure I'm painting black onto this layer mask and I can just paint over her lips. And now her lips are back to the normal color. Now let's zoom in a little more and see what else is going on. Now in this example, you see how the bit of the shadow has changed color as well underneath her toque. So you might want to go in and either adjust the color range specifically within your hue saturation adjustment layer. So in this case, we'd maybe want to do some little bits of adjustments in here like that, and now that gets rid of it for us. Or you can just go through with a black brush and mask that area out, whatever works best for you in your opinion. So now with that, if I turn that layer on and off, we have successfully changed the color from a bright pink to a neutral brown pretty quickly, very easily, and not a lot of work, not any manual cutting out, extra labor, things that are annoying and difficult to do in Photoshop sometimes. Nailed it. So now let's get even more specific with our color selections. I'm gonna reset everything back to zero. So another great way to change the color of anything in your photo is to use a feature called Colorize, which basically puts a single color over your whole photo so you don't have to deal with any weird changes in hue or things like that where the hue saturation adjustment slider as itself sometimes will struggle with. So using the Colorize feature and having a selection that's directly being affected will definitely help with your color changing effects. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So for this example, I'm going to just duplicate my background layer so I have a separate example here. I'll call this to example two. So in Photoshop, there's this really cool feature that maybe you haven't heard of before, but it's called Select Color Range. So you can actually go and pick a specific color range in your photo and make it into a selection. It's really cool. The way to access this tool is just go up to Select and down here to Color Range. Now once you've selected that, you'll probably see something like this. You'll have You'll have your color range dialog box, you'll have a fuzziness slider or range, and you'll have this weird black and white looking thing here. So this here is an example of what your layer mask looks like. So remember, white is 100% visible, black is 100% transparent. So if you look at this currently, 
all of my background is selected. So in this colorize example, I actually do want to affect my background, but you likely will not have a perfect selection like this right now. So you'll probably see something like this. It'll be sort of random. There won't be anything properly selected. So right away when you open this color range tool you'll have your eyedropper tool selected and you can click in a color range and it will turn that into a sample. So again all of the white areas are selected anywhere that is black is transparent. Now of course if I click around it's going to change completely so how can we get all of the colors that we want into our one selection? Luckily for us it's really easy because we have these two other eyedropper tool options here. So we have one with the plus and one with the minus. Now if you want to quickly access these eyedropper tools, you can hold shift to add on a eyedropper selection, which in this case, if you look at my cursor, I'm holding shift has a plus, or I can hold alter option and it will take away from that sample. So whichever one you'd like to do, you can also just click on these eyedropper tools themselves whatever works better for you. In this case, I'll just click on my plus icon here and now we can click around and continue to add certain areas onto my selection. You can even click and drag around to add things on really quickly. So that looks great to me. I'll add more over here, dragging all around my image, even down in this area. And then sometimes this little preview box isn't quite enough. So you can go to selection preview, change it from none, go to here to grayscale. And now you're going to see exactly what your layer mask will look like. So now I know that I need to add a little bit down in this area. I want to add, get rid of some of this banding. Go up in here. And that is about as good as we're going to get it right now. So now we can go and change the fuzziness slider, which is basically the tolerance of what we want selected. So I can increase this fuzziness and it's going to select more. There's going to be a little bit more tolerance of what will be selected. Things that are in a similar color range to this blue that we've been selecting. So in this case, I'll bring the fuzziness up just a little bit, maybe around 50. And so I'm going to get some nice selections around the outside of her furry jacket and her toque and things like that. So that looks great to me. And then I'll go ahead and click OK. Once I click OK, I'll have a selection that's active represented by these marching ants. And I want to add this onto a hue saturation adjustment layer. So I can click right here on my hue saturation adjustment layer once again. And that selection gets automatically added onto our layer mask. So now if I go to my master slider, it's only going to affect the background. But what I want to do now is not just change the hue, but I want to add a general color over my whole background. So I'll click this little tab right here that says colorize. I'll click on that and now whatever color I pick, it's going to be a solid color just like that. So in this case, maybe I want to change it to like a nice green color. I can increase the saturation if I'd like. Whatever works for you, but the benefit to using the colorize feature is that it won't have any weird banding when you really push the hue of the color like we did earlier changing the background color just with our simple sliders. So now I can really go in any direction and there's no banding. The background looks really, really nice. If you end up having any weird bits left over, you can just go back and adjust the fuzziness of your selection. Maybe add a few more things to your sample with the select color feature. If you do run into that issue, it's just a little bit of refining. You can even directly affect this layer mask, paint things in or out if you wish. In this case, things are looking pretty much fine to me. I could go and adjust things a little better so it affects less of her hair or I could go through and paint the outside of this toque in and things like that. But for the sake of this tutorial and to keep things moving along, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of it because you now know how to make those selections with your color range and you know how to paint onto a layer mask with your brush tool. So again, just clicking colorize and then you can change the hue, you can change the saturation, and you can even change the lightness or darkness of that color. So colorize is a great feature. You can change the colors of shirts, toques, skin color, background colors, sky, whatever. It really works amazing. Okay, so now that we're starting to get the hang of the hue saturation adjustment tool and colorize and some great methods to make selections around your colors, now let's go into another image and discuss the problems with changing the color of white and a way to work around it so you can change white into any specific color you wish. So over here in our other image, we have a white t-shirt and once again, I'm gonna grab my hue saturation adjustment layer. Just like before, I'll just play around with my master slider and notice this time how all the colors change just like before because we're affecting all the hues, except this time the white is not changing at all because the white shirt doesn't have any color, it doesn't have any hues to change. 
it's just white. So that is going to be a little bit of an issue for us. Even if I went ahead and clicked colorize, the white color still stays pretty much white. Some of the shadows change a bit, but for the most part, the white is still remaining white. It's not changing into a specific color. Say we want to turn the shirt into red. There's absolutely no way that that is going to pass off as red. It still looks like a white shirt, just now with red shadows. So how can we go about changing the color white into a specific color? So that's gonna bring us into our final color changing method in Photoshop. So I'm gonna just quickly delete this hue saturation adjustment layer. What we need to do now is add a color fill layer over top of our white t-shirt. In this case, we want to select the color of our t-shirt and we can do that very easily just like before in our previous image using our color range tool. So I'm gonna go up here to select down here to color range. And now we have our dialog box open up once again. I'm gonna leave my selection set to grayscale so I can really see what is going on in my photo. The fuzziness I'll just leave as is and we can adjust it later on. So I'm gonna click once to sample the basic area. So that's now our general selection. And of course this needs a bit of refining to add in some of these shadowed areas that are still part of our t-shirt. So I'll just zoom in here. I'm gonna hold shift to add into my selection. I can just click and drag along here. Clicking and dragging along. I'll make sure to add in a little bit of this area here. I'll make sure to add in this dark area up here as best as I can. And I don't want everything back here to be selected and it's likely because my fuzziness is set so high. So I'm gonna drop my fuzziness down a little so it's gonna darken out that background and really just isolate our t-shirt. So that looks better to me already, holding shift, adding even more to our selection here on the white t-shirt. And notice how well it even selects the little fuzzy bits around her shirt. The color range tool does a really great job at this kind of stuff. So for the most part, this looks very good to me, except I don't want all of this to be gray, which is kind of like 50% visible. So I'm gonna hold alter option. Now I have the minus eyedropper tool. So I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna get rid of that from my selection. So now that's looking a lot better to me. I can maybe click down here take some of that out and now we're starting to have a really nice selection of our t-shirt because remember white is going to be visible black is going to be transparent so with that I'm going to leave my fuzziness set here maybe I'll play around with it just a little now in this case I think right around 30 looks really good and I'll click OK now we're going to once again have a selection around the color range that we were just sampling and things and I'm going to add that onto a new color fill layer. So to add a new color fill layer we can go up to layer down here to new fill layer and solid color. Now I'll just leave this as color fill 1 opacity 100% and I'll leave my mode at normal for now. Click OK and now we can go ahead and pick a specific color that we'd like to change our shirt to. So for this example let's change it to a red color like I was talking about before something nice like this. Click OK. So now we have a red t-shirt, but it doesn't really look like a red t-shirt. It kind of just looks like this red brick on the outside of our shirt. So that doesn't look very good. So now we have to change the blend mode of this layer. So selecting my color fill layer, go up to my layer blending mode, click normal, go down here to multiply. And that's going to add in all of the luminance values, the brightness and the darkness, AKA the highlights and the shadows from our t-shirt and have them show through that color. So now look how great that t-shirt is looking for us. So I might have to go in here and just maybe adjust a little bit of her shoulder, maybe a little bit around here. So I'll click on my layer mask, grab my brush tool, making sure I'm painting white to add things back in. And I'm just going to click and paint along her shoulder here, fill all that good stuff in. And now with that, we have a pretty good selection of our whole t-shirt here. There's a little bit of stuff going on around the outside of her arm. We can double check this by viewing our layer mask, holding alter option, clicking on that layer mask. We can see the areas that are still being affected that we don't want. So I'll grab my brush tool painting black and I'll just paint out the areas around the outside of her arm here, paint out her pocket. Okay, and now that's looking really nice to me. Hold Alter Option, click on that layer mask once again. And now with that, we have successfully changed the color of our white t-shirt using a color fill layer. Now I can double click on this color fill layer and I can change this t-shirt color to anything I'd like. 
it really doesn't matter I can have it a nice blue maybe like a nice cyan color something trendy and whatever the cool kids wear these days by using a color fill layer and having a really nice selection that we got with the color range selection tool you can pretty much change your image into any color you want so that's a really great trick to turn white into any color you'd like. Now once you set it to a specific color you can even add a hue saturation adjustment layer on top of that to have even more control. So with this color fill layer I'll add a hue saturation adjustment layer. I'm going to create a clipping mask to that layer by clicking this little icon here. Now our hue saturation will only affect this color fill layer and if I click colorize I can now just go and change the hue, I can change the saturation and I can even change the darkness of that shirt. So this even gives you more control over the color rather than just having the color palette to drag around on. If you prefer using sliders and you can just do it with this method, add a color fill layer and clip your hue saturation adjustment layer to it and all the color changing magic that you wish to do will be possible. All right guys, so I know that was a ton of information, but those are the best ways to change any color in your photo using Photoshop. So with the methods that we talked about in today's tutorial, you can change any of the colors in your photo, no matter the situation. Each option will have its own benefits, and I think it just takes a bit of time and practice to realize which ones are gonna be best for which situations. Personally, I really love using that colorize feature if I'm changing anything on clothing, and I love to use just the basic hue sliders if I wanna do an overall adjustment to my full image. Now, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with more great videos just like today's. And of course, please hit that like button as it really does make a difference. If you have any burning questions about today's video or you have any future suggestions for tutorials, then make sure to leave a comment down below. Also, if you want to keep the Photoshop and photography learning going, then make sure to click up here for my most recent article on BeWellCreative.com and make sure to subscribe to my newsletter to stay up to date with more tutorials and great photography tips straight to your inbox every week. You can sign up and get my free ebook directly to your inbox right now by signing up via the link in the description below. Anyways guys, that's all I have for you for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on changing any color in your image with Photoshop. My name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com. You can find me on Instagram at BurnWills and with that, I'll catch you back here next time. See you then.